I was originally uh, commissioned as the design director for the Narader back in 2007. Uh, the Narader had been stored in Greece on chocks, so it was in a very derelict shipyard and the whole boat was in a terrible state of disrepair. Well, looking at the boat, it, it obviously had great potential. It had a wonderful history. Historically, it had belonged to one of Mussolini's ministers and originally was built in 1927. So after really careful surveying of the boat, we decided we had to find a yard that was actually capable of doing a riveted hull. We found a, a yard capable of this work in Croatia and Sibenik, but we had to load the boat and transport it there. We did this by lifting it with straps and then loading it onto a transporter and then shipping it straight over to Croatia. This was a very dangerous task to be doing because the boat, we didn't really know how well, how strong the keel was and the boat could have broken in half, which would have been the end. Um, Finally, we got into Sibenik and uh, we unloaded it. It was still, it could still float, but obviously it had no engines. So we unloaded it from the transporter, put it down into the water and then removed the straps and then towed it with tugs to its, rest, where its, its future resting place, which was the workshop. The boat looks in pretty good condition here but if you look closely you can see rings that we welded on the side that was to stabilize the boat when it was on the transporter anyway we lifted the boat out and we took it into the shipyard where the work really commenced this was mostly dismantling and ripping out all the old steel the engines getting rid of all the plate work and marking up what had to be replaced and restyled this was pretty extra extensive i mean almost 40 percent of the hull was in very poor condition. We also looked for new transmission systems and then the engineers specified a new engine which was brought in and lowered into position and um, you know the welding and support work around that was done. Meanwhile in Nile Street in our studio we were designing the boat inside and liaising with the commissioned interior outfitters which were Metrica who are based in Germany. Metrica cadded up the boat and um, they then started producing and prefabricating the parts, you know, according to our design. And um, this was wonderful to watch because you never, you don't see any of this work until it's actually been installed. So it's sort of like you see people spraying and doing veneer work, but you never see the finished pieces. It's not like a building project. You see parts of them. At the same time this was going on on board the ship, it was all being rewired and new panelling fitted, new insulation finished. There was almost 45 miles of cabling in here, which sounds like a lot. It is for a 60 metre boat. On the decks, we had to redo all the decks, all the actual, the, then the hull itself all had to be done. It all had to be spray painted, cleaned down, riveted panels put in, the name replaced and the boat began to take shape. This was a very exciting time inside the shed. You know, as work progressed, it ended up being three years. Then we, when we finally started replacing the decks with teak decking and then corking it all, it really took shape. It was kind of magic. Inside, we were installing all the flooring and the beautifully veneered work. I mean, this work was pretty unsurpassed. It's immaculate craftsmanship. On, on the decks, the old yellow funnel, which was part of the Latsis line that the boat sailed under, we replaced all that. And then finally the day came when we opened up the shutters for the first time and winched out the narrator. After three years of hard work with a lot of men and a lot of colleagues all involved in this project, we all stood back aghast at what a beauty she was. The lines were absolutely immaculate. And all the woodwork, the trim on the boat, it all looked perfect. All with new anchors, the deck work, and the big, now the big test was the sea trials. So when you put the boat into the water, you're obviously calculating all the steel that's going in, but one's not quite sure if it's actually going to be balanced. But the narrator went, and it was so, it just went back into the, into the, into the water like a beautifully made handmade glove when one puts it on one's hand and obviously our colleagues the captain then tested it for the first time and fired up the engines and the boat performed its maneuvers absolutely immaculately and finally the day came when we cleaned it all down and the boat set sail 
to return to Greece via the Corinth Canal. As you can see here, it's uh, inside we'd created, it's a really, it would in the future, it was to become an HQ for the company. That's the original um, picture you saw there. Um, and then there were lounges and then there was this sun deck. So essentially it's a motor yacht, like a day boat. And then on board, there's uh, all the, uh, the original fittings from the narrator we used as part of a visual Display, visual displays and that worked in conjunction with the actual museum itself which charts not only the history of the narrator from being rebuilt but also the whole fleet that the family owned of, of all their boats over the periods of time. So this was a, a fabulous culmination, not only to trace all the boats that had been owned by the Latsis family but also to actually see or enable visitors to see how the boat was actually transformed and here it is returning almost home after three and a half years really passing through the Corinth Canal and uh, to its eventual re resting place which in, in, is in Elefsis in Greece and um, as you can see here that's the this is the uh, the sun deck the sun deck level so it's not only a great ship, but it was a great coming together of all different kinds of trades and skills, some of which will, you know, will, will disappear because this form of shipbuilding, it's, it's, ships are not built like this anymore with shipwrights and carpenters and riveters and painters. And uh, there was so much traditional work went back into this. And uh, I think everybody who worked on it was very proud and very proud to see it finished and be returned to Greece.